from your belly tonight. From your belly. Come on, lift it up from your belly. Come on. Somebody shout hallelujah. She better not see somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, if you need him to bless you tonight, I need you to know when praise is going up. Blessings come down. Somebody needs to bless you tonight. This wonderful under shepherd and overseer, the bishop of the house, the angel of the church, this prognosticator, this preacher close to life, your pastor, but my new friend, Pastor Williams. Come on, come on, let's celebrate our pastor tonight. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. And we can't celebrate our pastor without celebrating our first lady. Can we celebrate Lady Williams tonight? Come on. Come on, come on, we can bless our lady better than that. But Pastor Williams, I say it everywhere I go that your pastor is God's gift to you. Yeah. I know he is, but the Bible says that I will give you pastors after my own heart. Yeah. Anything yeah. somebody gives you is a gift. Yeah. Your pastor is God's yeah. gift to you, and how you treat him is your gift back to God. Yeah. I'm so I'm so happy to be here with him. Uh, my, my boy called me from Philadelphia just last week and said, There's a man in South Carolina, Columbia. Uh, he wanted me to call you. I want you to know he's good people. Uh, he's going to do something. He wants you to come. And I just want to uh, be, be John and be the fourth one to let you know when he calls, he's all right to go to. And so I did not know that that was going to be the same guy that I was coming to his church on tonight. And then I've got some family members that I just adopted. They adopted me uh, from here. They even came to my church on watch night meeting. Got in trouble with your pastor, but came on to me. Thank God uh, for my family here tonight. Uh, and so God has a way of bringing you together when you need to get together. And so I'm so happy to be here with him. Then, to all these 
verifying preachers and pastors, gospel scholars, stations of the curriculum that sit in these pews with me. I greet you in the name of Calvary's only conquering champion, Jesus the Christ. It's at his name every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. To all of you, my father's children, I feel good just to be alive. I'm really glad just to have life. Come on, come on. Come, can, I, can I get some praises in the room? That ain't got to have a lot, but you praise him for a little bit that you do have. Come on. Ain't got no new car, but your hoop can drive just fine. Come on. Ain't got no snack, but colonial bread feeds you just fine. Come on. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't need no lobster, ladies and gentlemen. If God bless me with some mahinas and crackers, I don't need no filet mignon. If he give me some bread and some tomatoes, oh, y'all bougie, you don't know about tomato sandwiches. Okay, okay. Okay, see, some of y'all need a, a, a roof crest dinner to praise God. But if you give me a two piece from KFC, I'll shout like I got steak. I learned how to praise God for the little stuff because what I learned, if you bless him for the little stuff, he'll give you some big stuff. Anybody here can praise him for your little stuff? Come on. Woo! I feel good tonight. We're going to have some church in this world. I like the way you have church. You can always tell the spirit of the pastor based on the spirit of the church. For instance, if the church is dead, it's a good indication that the pastor is dead. If the church is submitting, it's because the pastor is submitting. But when you got a curse that goes in, you just look for that pastor and he'd be the first one. I, I saw him and I said, this is my kind of dude. This is this is my kind of dude. I, and we could we could be important in other places, but when we come to church, ain't no place for no important Negroes. I don't care how much education you got, you leave that in the car. You leave your degrees in the car. You get them when you But when you come in here, you got to be a fool for Jesus. You don't want no red bottles because you can't shop good in red bottles. What? Get you some pay less specials and come on, let's have <laughs> Yes, sir. I told them, I told them at our church, I started looking at their feet. <laughs> and I don't want no red bottoms in our church. I don't want any red bottoms. They don't want to shout right. They pay too much. They don't want to break them heels. Leave them in the car. Go to my shoe show and get your pair of $19.99. That if you break the heel, it ain't going to matter. You pay. Come on. Yeah, you look good other places. But when it comes to church, you got to get something that you can get down in. Yeah. So I'm happy to be here tonight. Thank God for Reverend Loretta Coleman who put this got me here tonight. Can we celebrate her one time? Come on. Oh, yeah. She turned. 56 years old yesterday yeah. and she's just like a mother to me. I've known her a little over two years and we've loved each other ever since. Real people are hard to find. People major in being fake and phony these days. You never know who's keeping it real and who's just trying to kick it with you to get what you got. But the Loretta Coleman is that one that's just going to be who she is and I love her just for that. She's going to love you when you're right. She's going to love you when you're wrong. She's going to tell you about it but she's going to love you in spite of it. So I've been to Columbia so many times for her and I'll be back so many other times for her and my new friend, Pastor uh, Williams. Alright, let's get right to this. Maestro, keep me in, in the QC, man. I get nervous when you ain't playing nothing. I get, I get nervous. Uh, Second Samuel chapter 9. Second Samuel chapter 9. Come on, preacher. Second Samuel chapter 9. I feel like God's gonna do something here tonight. Yes, yes. Yes. Hey. Yes. Hey. Come on. <laughs> this atmosphere. Yeah. This atmosphere is pregnant with possibility. Woo! Yes. Yeah. Whenever you get in an atmosphere that's pregnant with possibility, anything could happen. Anything. Anything. Yes, sir. Second Samuel chapter nine. And I want to look at verse 1 through 7. Come on. Come on. When you find 2 Samuel 9 and 1, say, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Still looking at him. Wait on me. Come on. Oh. <laughs> yes, sir. Help yourself, guys. Just 
mercy of God real quick. Lord, I want to say thank you. I'm looking for somebody that know God been good to you. If I said, Lord,
And she said, Jesus, I need you to hook my daughter up. And he said, no, I can't do that because I'm only here for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She said, I know, but, but I need you to help. And he says, I can't give bread, the children bread to the dogs. And the Bible says, she said, but even the dogs want the crumbs on the table. And then the text said, and she worshiped. Jesus already told her, I can't do it. But she worshiped. And the more she worshiped, the harder it was for Jesus to tell her no. And finally he said, okay, be it unto you. Ma'am, the Lord says to me, to tell you praise is bringing you through. But no matter what happens, just keep on praising. Thank you, God. That's why some of, some, some of y'all look at us funny when we praise, but you don't know what we need. And you don't know how many bills we got through. You don't know what kind of health problems we got. You don't know we almost lost our mind. And praise is the only thing that kept us in our life. Verse 1, 2 Samuel 9, yep, verse 1. Come on. The Bible says, David asks, Is there anyone left of the house of Saul who I can show kindness to for Jonathan's sake? Come on here. Come on. Now, there was a servant of Saul's house named Ziba. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They summoned him to appear before David. Uh -huh. And the king said to him, Are you Zion? Uh -huh. And he replied, Yes, I'm at your service. Yeah. And the king said to him, Is there anyone still alive from the house of Saul come on, come on. whom I can show God's kindness? In other words, David said, God's been good to me, so I gotta be good gotta to somebody be, else. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Ziba answered the king and said, Yeah, there's still a son of Jonathan. But he's lame in both feet. Come on, here. David said, Where is he? And Ziba answered, He is at the house of Makar, the son of a male in Lodabar. So David, King David, had him brought from Lodabar, from the house of Makar, son of a male. When Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, watch this, he bowed down to pay honor. And David said, my fellowship. Mm. He said, at your service. Yes. Come on here. David said to him, don't be afraid. Uh -huh. For I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. Uh -huh. And I will restore you. Somebody said restoration. restoration. Uh, you didn't say it strong. Say restoration. restoration. And I will restore you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul. Come on here. And you will always be at my table. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? That's enough. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God right, right. shall stand forever. Yeah. Right. Look back at verse 5, because that's what I'm going to talk about for the next 19 minutes and 32 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> says, so King David had him brought from Lodabar, mm -hmm. from the house of Makar, son of a male. So King David had him brought from Lodabar from the house of Makar, son of a male. So King David had him brought from Lodabar from the house of Makar, uh, son of a male. I'm going to talk for a moment using another subject. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be here. Look at somebody just tell them I ain't supposed to be here. Come on. No, that was a hater. Find the celebrator on the road and just tell them I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not supposed Come on, to be here. Help yourself, Ladies and gentlemen, brothers uh -huh, and sisters, uh -huh. every, every person in this room, uh -huh. Cole, can admit, yeah, yeah. can agree, Come on, 
that in life sometimes things happen. Lord have mercy. That'll take you places where you really didn't want to be. Yes. Come on here. Life sometimes can deal you a bad hand. Yes. Because it's life and not a game of cards. You cannot throw your hand back in and ask for another one. You just got to play the hand that you've been dealt. Yeah. The, the truth of the matter is tonight, everyone in, in this room have once said that, that uh, it, it's been once said, ladies and gentlemen, that if you really want to make God laugh, just tell him your plan. Uh -huh. uh, because you understand God's ways are not like your ways and God's thoughts are not like your thoughts. Can I suggest to you tonight that your plans can be one thing, but your reality can yes, be something God. else. Come on, y'all not talking. Uh, for, for, for instance, all, all the people in this room, no doubt there's somebody here, you plan to have a college degree by now, but, but for some reason or another, you didn't get to finish school and so your plans got changed. My, my stroll, maybe, maybe there's somebody here, you plan on being married by 30, living in a five bedroom house with four children, a backyard and three cars, but, 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 but your plan got changed and you had no idea that at 37 you'd still be single, y'all. Y'all not saying that. But, or, or, or you had no idea at 40 you'd be in divorce court with bills and a broke heart because your plans got changed. Yeah. But th th there are moments, ladies and gentlemen, there are moments that you just have to sit down and evaluate your life. And if you be honest, you say to yourself, I'm not supposed to be right here. You know, I'm not supposed to still be struggling living from check to check. I'm not, I, I'm not supposed to still be this lonely. I'm not, I'm not supposed to be battling sickness and disease as young as I am. I'm not supposed to be fighting through depression. No, no, but you make up your mind. I know what the devil tried to do, but you make up your mind, I'm coming out of this. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. What God has for me is for me, and I know God got better for me than what I got right now. I, mean, I just need you to shout this for me. Come on, come on. No, 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 no. I refuse to go through another year like last year. Yo. I refuse to go through 2017 and it looks like 1996. Y'all not talking here. No, 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 no. I'm coming out of this year. The Bible says that life and death is in the power of your tongue. And if you want to see it, you got to say it. Y'all not talking now. Can I tell you, life can put you in some tough places, but when life puts you in, the Lord will bring you out. Now, now help me. And, and, and listen, why you thought you were coming to an ordinary revival tonight, the Holy Spirit set you up. You didn't know this ain't no revival. This is your surprise coming out party. Come on. Yeah, I need you to help me. Sit. Come on. Don't shout tonight. Huh? Don't holler tonight. Don't dance tonight. Because God says you've been in this place long enough and I, I just need you to give me a coming out praise. Yeah. Y'all, they said, you wonder why we stayed in praise and worship so long? God said, I was giving you time to give me an advanced praise. Y'all, he said, I was giving you time to put a down payment on what I'm about to do. Yeah. I said, can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that the quicker you learn how to praise God in it, the faster he'll move to get you out of it. Y'all, ain't talking. Can, can I get somebody to shout broke because you know you ain't going to be broke always? Can I get somebody to shout? Sick, but you know you ain't gonna be sick always. Oh, you, you, you learn how to praise it in advance, and sometimes it makes you look like a fool because folk know what you're going through, and they can't understand as broke as you are, why you hollering like that. They can't understand as ragged as you live, why you hollering like that. As sick as you being, why you hollering like that. What they don't know is I ain't shouting for where I am. I'm shouting for where I'm going. Is it? So, so for a moment, so for a moment, I want to, I don't have time to flirt. I want to, I want to show you real quick. I, I want to show you a man tonight who's in a place he's not supposed to be. Watch this. Watch, watch this. This divine drama unfold, ladies and gentlemen. Watch this. Here's the text. King Saul. Tell us, tell us, 
who is David's sworn enemy. And you do understand, you Bible readers, you do understand Saul is David's enemy not because he's done something wrong. Saul hates David simply because of the favor on his life. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And can I tell you, favor will get you in some fights. Y'all not talking. Promotion will cause you some problems. There are some folk don't like you and don't even know you. There are some folk that talk about you and ain't never even talked to you. And you wonder, what have I done? You ain't done nothing to them. It's just the favor that's on your life. Saul hates David because of the anointing that's on his life. Uh, watch this. David loved Saul. But Saul hated David. It's in the book. Okay. It's in the book. Okay. Okay. It's in the book. Saul, who was once anointed, but no longer, hates the man who God has his hand on now. Yes, sir. See, yeah. so you always hate somebody in their season ah, when you know you miss your season. Ah, no, I don't talk. No, 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 listen, listen. If you know you handle your season right, you be happy when other folk get blessed. But when you know you messed up yours, you can't stand to see nobody else in there. Here it is, here it is, it is David who is Saul's sworn enemy. And you understand Saul had a son named Jonathan. And now Saul and Jonathan have been killed in a battle. And they're in a city, and the city is in chaos. Now you understand why Jonathan and Saul are in war. Jonathan has a five-year-old son by the name of Maria Baal. Now you understand that name means opponent of Baal. You already know who Baal is. Baal was that false idol god. Yeah. Now, now you understand this for real. Baal is an honorable name. It is a respectable name. But that's about to change. Because when you read the text now that the battle has gotten fierce and Saul and Jonathan have been slain in the field. Somebody runs into the palace and they say, Saul and his sons have been killed. They said, well, in some of their trouble in the land now. Now when they make that yeah. announcement, you understand the palace goes into disarray. Everybody begin to grab stuff and start running. And immediately everybody start panicking and getting all of their stuff and getting out of town. Now I just told you Jonathan had a son that's five years old. That little boy is there now. That boy's nurse grabs him and she runs with him in one arm and some other stuff in the other arm. Now, now she ran as fast as she could but while she's running something strips her up and she falls and the boy goes flying out of her arm. Yeah. That's the story. Watch it. Watch it. The baby hits the ground so hard yeah. that it breaks both of his legs. Yeah. Watch this. Uh -huh. Watch this. Ladies and gentlemen, talk about he's hurt by somebody uh -huh. who's trying to help. Y'all come a little closer. <laughs> the baby gets hurt by somebody uh -huh. who's trying to help. Uh -huh. And I don't know, I don't know if you've ever been there where, where people who helped you at one stage of your life uh -huh. or ended up hurting you and another. Y'all not gonna talk to me. Y'all not gonna talk. Listen, they helped you at one season, but they hurt you in another season. Now this boy gets dropped by the person that's assigned to carry him. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And I think I'm about to tell you before I move on. Uh -huh. Be careful who you let carry you. Y'all right, yeah. ain't talking strong. I, I said you better be careful who you let carry you. And I'm not and I'm not talking about physically, but I'm talking about who you let carry you emotionally. You know, you know that, that's when you start loving folk that don't love you back. That's when you give your heart to somebody who ain't gave their heart to you. When, 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 when love is not a two-way street, they begin to carry you emotionally. But not only don't let them carry you emotionally, don't you let nobody carry you financially. Because can I tell you, all money ain't good money. Y'all not talking. Y'all not talking. Listen, some people will carry you financially so that they can keep something over your head. And they'll pull the strings and want you to do what they want 
want you to do. Y'all ain't gonna say that, but listen, if they carry you financially and you don't dance when they say dance. No, 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 there's some folk can keep their coins, you understand? Did you understand? I'd rather eat, I'd rather eat the crumbs with bones yeah. than to eat steaks with snakes. You ain't got to say that. I'd rather rock with those, y'all ain't gonna say that. But you gotta let some folk know, Negro, I don't need your money. You are a resource. God is my source. So even if you take your money and roll, God gonna take care of you. the shots in your life. You tell them I don't answer but to one somebody. Now I thank you for what you do. But don't you ever get it twisted if you stop doing what you do. I'm going to keep rolling. You better tell one monkey don't stop God so God. Uh, even, even in some like churches there are folk who give a little bit more than others. Uh -huh. And they think because they got a little more, then they can call a few more shots. But, but, but the church thanks you for your money. But if you stop filling yourself and stop giving your money, don't think the lights gonna get cut off. Y'all not talking good. I, I, I'm telling you, you just can't let everybody carry you financially. But, they, but not only don't let them carry you financially, and not only don't let them carry you emotionally, there's some folk you can't let carry you spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, listen. Um, not everybody is qualified to speak into your life. Y'all ain't feeling me tonight. L listen, everybody ain't qualified to speak into your life. L listen, not, not everybody ain't qualified to lay hands on you. Y'all not saying that. That's why you gotta be careful who you jump in that prayer line. That's that's why that's why you don't get up in church and y'all pray for me. No, no, no. No, I don't want everybody praying for me. Not for me. And, and that's why that's why that's when that's why some of my folks are so messed up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and because because somebody told you, well, you don't matter where you go, just as long as you go to church. No, no, no. Somebody told you wrong. The devil lives a lot. It does matter who's spiritually feeding you. It does matter who's speaking into your life because whatever is spoken into your life is what's gonna come out of your life. And if they put junk in you, junk is gonna. Um, so, 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 so this woman is carrying him. She means well, but she hurts him. Come on, come on. Tell the story. Folk can be. Tell the story. Um, folk can love you, but they can love you and still be wrong. No doubt, this woman didn't mean to hurt him. But, but, but he hurt him. Just the same. The, the Bible said. The Bible said that she picks the boy back up and she keeps on running. Now, now this boy is hurt. Now this boy's legs are broke. Now this boy's feet are paralyzed. And, and because of what he's going through, watch this. She changed his name from Merabel, which means royalty, and now she names him Mephibosheth, which means son of shame. Yeah. Let, let me tell you this before I go. Don't let what you go through change who you are. Y'all ain't talking that. Y'all like I, I said. I said don't, don't, don't let what you go through change who you are. Because here it is now. Here it is now. Here it is. You, you don't change to what you're in. You let what you're in change you. That's it. Now, Rev Coleman, now he moves from the palace. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And they go down to a place called Low the Bar. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what Low the Bar. Uh -huh. They go from the high palace. Uh -huh. yes, because of what he's gone through, he's living in Low 
the bar. Uh -huh. Take your time. Uh, okay, Build okay. Low the bar means desert place. Lord have mercy. Low the bar means a dry place. Yes, yes. Y'all ain't talking to me. Low the bar means a place where there's no help. Uh -huh. yes. Look at this. Look at it. This Look at boy it. is a child of the king. Lord have mercy. And he's living in Lodabar. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. He's a child of the king. Uh -huh. Chris. But he got no hope. Yeah. I don't know who I'm preaching to. He, he's a child of the king, but he's in a place where he ain't growing. And I'm preaching to somebody now. You're a child of the king. And so my question is, what are you doing in Lodabar? You, I know you're a child of the king, so why are you so depressed? I know you're a child of the king, so why are you in a place where you ain't growing? Y'all ain't talking. Well, what happened to you? You used to live in a high place, but something stole your joy. Something stole your shout. Something stole your yes, Lord. And you go from a high place and now how you living in Lodabar. You can always tell people who live in Lodabar because they used to smile. You tell people who live in Lodabar because they used to be the loudest one in the church. And now they come but they just, they just sit there. In the back of my mind I wonder what happened. What happened that hurt you so bad? Lord have mercy. That you went from your high place. Uh -huh. Down. Now you're living yeah. in Lodabar. Yeah. 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 No doubt. Yeah. He's thinking about how good it, it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. No, doubt, no doubt he lays in the bed at night. He, he remembers a time where things were so much better. So Lord much have mercy. Better. But she dropped me because they they dropped me I'm in this low place. And I, I find myself singing that song nobody knows. That soul I see nobody knows but Jesus and me. Yeah, I'm living in low Come on. My praise is low. Yeah. Yeah. My shout yeah. low. Yeah. My giving is low. He's living in in, in Lodabar. And, and I, and I want to say to him, I want to say to him, I, I want to say to him, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be, to be here. Yeah. I want to say to him, don't you know that you're a child of a king? Yeah. I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight. You're preaching, sir. I don't know who I'm preaching you to tonight. But I'm going to ask you, what are you doing in Lodabar? What, what, what are you doing? What are you, I know it's been rough, but why are you in that low, that, that low place? But I don't know why you're there, but the Lord told me to tell you, you've been there long enough. I just, I just need somebody to shout, I'm coming out tonight. Come on. Come on, I need you to shout from your belly, I'm coming out tonight. Yes, I've been drunk. Yes, I've been hurt. Yes, I cried. Yes, I struggled. But I'm coming out of this tonight. Talk to him and tell him we coming out tonight. Yes. Yes. He's he's in in Lodabar. Um, and while he's in Lodabar, uh, David begins to think about how good God had been to him. He says, I wonder. Is there anybody left? Of Saul's house. That I can show the kindness of God. He says, I, I know Saul was nasty to me. He said, I can't control how folk do me. But I can control how I do folks. He said, He said, I know he was nasty to me, but I'll still be good to him. He said, If anybody left that I can be good to from Saul's house. And they said, well, Saul's got a servant, and he's still alive. Check him out. So go call Zyber. Zyber comes up. He said, look, 
I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. God's been real good to me. Yes, he has. He says that now. And I want to be good somebody. Is there anybody left in Saul's house anybody. that I can bless? Yeah. He said, yeah. Uh-huh. So you know your boy Jonathan? Yeah. Uh-huh. He said, well, John had a son. Uh-huh. He said, did? Yeah, yeah. So what happened to him? Said, said, I don't know really, but but all I know is he's living in Lodabar. All right. That's, it. That's all, all right. I know. I don't know, I don't know, but I just know he's living now in a low place. Yeah. And David said, okay, okay, well, ain't no son of a king got no business living in a low place. Preach, preach. Uh, he said, go down there and, and tell Zyber. Zyber, he said, go down there and tell Mephibosheth. I said, come up to the house. Uh -huh. Somebody shout, I'm coming out. Come on out. Okay. Now, Zyber goes. Well, he knocks on the door. Uh -huh. Now, yes, sir. Mephibosheth has been in this place for a long time. Uh -huh. Well, all right. Now, it's customary that when every new king comes in, uh -huh. that that new king would massacre, would kill everybody from the old king's That's lineage. Right. He didn't want nobody in the bloodline to still be alive. Yeah. Because maybe they would get full of themselves and want to take the position of their foreparents. And so the king would kill everybody. So the right thing for David to do was to kill everybody who was associated with Saul. But how many know God can change the plans? I just need somebody to hop the plans just change. What was supposed to kill me is going to bless me. What was supposed to take me out is going to bring me in. What? Okay, okay, okay. So when they knock on the door, yeah. Mephibosheth thinks this is it. My God. <laughs> this is it. No, no. Right. It's over. It's over. It's over. I've been living in this low place, but, ah. but it's over. Somebody goes and opens up the door. Uh-huh. And, and Ziba says, yeah. Mephibosheth. Uh -huh. Well. Mephibosheth said, yeah. Notice, he's still lame. Yeah. <laughs> He's lame and broke feet. He says, Yeah. And Zaba says, Get up! Uh -huh. Come on here. He says, The king has need of you. I'm going to tell somebody, it's time for you to get up. Why? Because the king got need of you. I know, I know you've been wrong. I know you messed up. But don't worry about that. It's time for you to get up. Because the king got, got need of you. And so he says, he's got to take you up to David's house. Now, imagine the terror in Mephibosheth. Yes, sir. Tell the story. Because I'm thinking when I get there, David's going to have the key. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Tell the story, Rabbi. He's lame yeah. in his feet. Uh -huh. and, uh -huh. and tell the man says, take me to the king. I says, I've been hurt. Yeah. Woo! But I'm yes, going to the king. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. I've been crying. Going to the king. I just believe when I get to the king, things are, are going to get better. Yeah. 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 He gets, he gets. To, to what David is, and and David says, uh -huh. says, uh, Mephibosheth. Yeah, Mephibosheth. And he never lifts his hand. Uh -huh. He says, here I am. He says, I know it's been rough on you. Come on, here. He says, he says, I know. Uh, you've had some hard years. He says, I know this thing has been tough for you. He says, he said, but I want you to know your time has come. I just need somebody here tonight that can speak by faith. My time has come. Yeah. Uh, you touch your neighbor, tell them it's my time now. Come on. Come on. I'm out of here, but touch your neighbor, tell them it's my time now. Yeah. I've been down, but it's my time now. Woo! I've been hurt, but it's my time now. Yeah! I've been made to cry, but but it's mine, it's my turn now, I got to leave you now, but the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, that David calls Mephibosheth, can you hear me? Because that you are 
a child of the king. He said, because of who your daddy is, he said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you now. I'm going to bless you tomorrow. And I'm going to bless you forevermore. Can the church say yes? Oh,
Don't wait for your last call. Don't wait to the very moment. Shout anything. Mama, anything. Shout.
For somebody, you just shouted your way out of your storm. For somebody, you were too reserved to give it praise. You prayed your way through it. Because you know you're not supposed to be in that place. The sun sets free. It's free indeed. I'm coming out tonight. I want the devil to know that I'm coming out tonight. I will tell somebody by the time you get home tonight, I don't know who you are. But before you get home tonight, because you praise God in his house, God's doing a work in your house. Because some of you, you came here in a storm. And you had the nerve to praise him in spite of what you're going through. God told me to tell you that's all I need to see was that you would not let the storm steal your praise. Job said, the Lord gave and the Lord took away. But whether he gives or takes away, bless it be the name of the Lord. In other words, Job said, no matter what I'm going through, I'm still going to bless his name. And because of that, the Bible says, God turned the captivity of Job. And he gave him double for his trouble. Yes, I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight. But the Lord said, I'm going to give you Woo. double for your trouble. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a time and a season for everything. There's a time and You've had a season of crying. Uh-huh. It's joy time. You've had a season of struggling. It's overflow time now. And I'm telling you tonight, if your faith can receive it, your life, if your faith can believe it, your life can receive it. I'm telling you, in an atmosphere like this, anything could happen. Cancer can be healed in this world tonight. Debt can be paid in this world tonight. Crazy faith, like I got crazy faith, like you could have came here and you had a negative two hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you ever been there. Yeah. Where well, you got a bank statement had negative? That means you ain't have nothing, but you owe them two hundred. I got that kind of faith, like like I can come here with a negative two hundred, and I can go back and check my online bank account tonight. And where I knew that was a negative. Somehow God will get in the computer. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody ought to believe it tonight. Now I'm telling you. Because I, I listen, it's happened at my church so many times. Come on, Pastor, tell us. It's happened at my church so many times. Yeah. That people on Facebook lying that can testify. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. I got up in church one Sunday and I said the exact same thing that I'm believing. That this praise is gonna turn some stuff around. This praise, this praise. I said to them not many Sundays ago, about midnight tonight. Uh-huh. Check this stuff. God's gonna turn it around. Right. And now some folks who didn't even make it to midnight, around 11 o'clock on Sunday night, they start texting. This is crazy. I know I didn't have this much in the bank. That's this is crazy. BMW. I got a guy who told me. BMW, he had, a, he had insurance with State Farm on the Come BMW. On, he had that thing over two years ago. Uh-huh. I said that that Sunday, that Monday, Woo. he sent me a message. And State Farm said, what did they say? Now, now, of all time, they could have did this six months ago, they could have did it six months later. Right. But right. the day after the Lord told me to tell him, I'm getting ready to turn around. Uh-huh. The day after, he said, State Farm just Come sent on. me a letter. I said they owe me $1,200. Yes, sir. 
He said, he said, man, I hadn't had that deal done with in. It's been over two years ago. But God got in the system and turned stuff around. I believe that tonight God's going to turn some stuff around for somebody in this room. Somebody hit your hand and say, it's me, it's me. Yeah. Keep it right there. Lose me in the spirit. Yeah. God's going to turn some stuff around for somebody in this room. Yeah. 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 Hit your hand and shout, it's me, it's me. Come on, the angels walking around this room now looking for somebody to bless. And you gotta let them know, it's me who you're looking for. It's me. It's me who needs a miracle. It's me. It's me who needs a breakthrough. It's me.
can't rush this moment. Because yeah. moments like this don't come our way. The water is trouble. The Holy Ghost water is trouble.
That woman that had an issue of blood, she pressed. Just press away. There's a blessing in your presence. Mama, there's a blessing in your presence. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you on this mother tonight. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your strength. Father, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you lay your hands on this mother. I pray that you strengthen her where she's weak. I pray that you restore what the enemy has taken away. I pray that you give her mobility of her limbs. I pray that you give her back double for her trouble. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, loosen these limbs. Say that the Lord Jesus rebukes you tonight. Say that the Lord rebukes you tonight. And no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you heal this woman that you set this woman free in the name of Jesus restoration I speak restoration in every limb every limb I bind strokes I bind depression I bind high blood pressure I bind kidney failure I bind heart disease. I find everything that's like, like you. I cast it into the pit. Never to come back again. Jesus, Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. Set this woman free tonight. Set this woman free tonight. I say loose her and let her go. Spirit of infirmity, loose her and let her go. It's time to get better for you. It's time to get better for you. It's time to get better for you. Jesus took him out of the village. 
Bible says he spit on his eyes, he laid his hands on it, told him to look up and ask him, can you see it at that point? That's right. He said, I see men, but they look like trees. And they're walking. The Bible said, then Jesus touched him again and told him to look up. And the man saw clearly. Which suggests that that man's miracle was not instantaneous. That's right. Yeah. It was That's a right. process. That's right. yeah. 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 It was a process. No, God could have healed him instantly. That's right. But he did it in the That's process. Right. That's right. And I hear God saying, ma'am, I'm giving you this uh -huh. in a process. Yeah. 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 I don't know why. I don't know why, but I hear God said 121. Okay. All right. All right. Oh. I don't know if that's 121 hours, if that's 121 days. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. But I do know faith without works is dead. Yeah. 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 121 hours. What is that? 70 hours is three days. I'm gonna sell this hundred and twenty-one dollars, and I believe in God. Yeah. And over the next hundred and twenty-one hours, yeah, yeah. you're gonna see a turnaround. Yeah. Lord, I sow in faith that this woman can receive my grace. Yeah. Yeah. And she can stretch her hand and say, "In Jesus' name." Somebody shout 121. Now, at maybe 121 in the morning. I don't know. Maybe 121 in the morning. Because after midnight, anything can happen. But I'm assuming it's going to be 21 in faith. That you will receive in grace. You believe it? God's gonna give you back everything you lost. Days, that's cool. If it takes 121 days, that's cool. Anyway, you bless us, we'll be satisfied. Now, if you're here, you're not saved. This will be a waste of time. That's right. If you leave this place and don't know Jesus, that's right. Stand to your feet all over the room, will you? Thank you, Jesus. Thank God is here. what you've done in your past, God can feel you right now. God can feel you right now. 
you hear you're not saved, but you want to be, I want you to come back right now. Yeah. Secondly, you said, Jones, I'm saved and I know Jesus, but I'm a part of the church, but I'm not growing where I'm going. I go to church just because that's what I do. I go to mom and them church and dad and them church. But I feel something in new dimension tonight. I feel like this is the place that God would have me to be. I feel like the, the, the life, the, the words of life is wrapped up in this man's mind. I believe my destiny can be made better if I connect with this ministry. I want to be a part of this church. If that's you, you want to hook up with this ministry tonight, I want you to come. I want you to come. There's an anointing in this room. Do it. Right now. All right. Lastly, and we're going. Because there's an anointing in this room that anything could happen. That's right. I sold $121 in the right. lady. Because that's what God told me to do. 21 is the number of divine release. That's right. You don't believe it. Daniel, I think it's in Daniel 9. That's up. Daniel had been praying for an answer. The Bible says he fasted and prayed and fasted and prayed and nothing ever happened. 21 days later, an angel shows up to Daniel. And the angel said, Daniel, I heard you the first time. Yeah. Read the Bible. The Bible said, D Daniel, I was on my way with your answer, Listen. but the prince of Persia, yes, a demonic force, stopped me. Stop me. And for the last 21 days, me and that demonic power have been wrestling with your blessing. Mm. He said, I was fighting to get it to you, and the enemy was fighting to keep it from you. He said, I had to call Michael, the warring angel, and Michael helped me fight. Yes, sir. He said, 21 days later, here I am with the answer to your prayer. I want every person in this room, this is no game, this is no giving. I believe in God tonight. Every person in this room that can get a $21 seed, I want you to give me yeah. your hand. Yeah. Every person in this room, That's you right. need the answer. You need God to turn yeah. something in your favor. Yeah. You need God to turn something on yeah. your behalf. Whether it's in your body, whether it's in your pocket, whether it's in your family, you need God to give you the answer you've been praying for. I want you to sow this symbolic seed of $21 and say, God, I need you to do for me what you did for Daniel. I can turn around within 21 days. Yeah. Every person in this room that can get it, don't think like the, don't let the devil talk you out of this. Don't you need too much from God to let twenty one dollars keep you from your blessing? That's right. That's right. Twenty one dollars can't pay your car payment. Twenty one dollars can't buy your house. Twenty one dollars can't pay off no stupid loans. Twenty one dollars ain't big enough to be a harvest. So it's not a harvest. It must be a seed. Got to be a seed. Yes. I need. I need to turn around. I sold that 121 for her. I'm going to sold this 21 for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do know in order to get something for you, sometimes you got to do something for somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. If you want God to bless you, you got to be a blessing to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Every person that can. He said, Rev, I ain't got $21. Keep, keep it flowing. Keep it flowing. Mm -hmm. The spirit is in that music. Don't stop. <laughs> Electronic giving is available. $21. Pastor's joining me with that 121 tonight. Hallelujah. So be it to you. God turn it around. Every person that trusts you tonight, give them a turn around. Every person that trusts you tonight, turn something around. Every person. Every person. Give me an answer. Give me an answer. Give me an answer. Give me an answer. Bless you, sir. Give me an answer. Bro. I'm showing my faith. I'm receiving my grace. Give me an answer. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Come on. You said that I ain't got $21, but I got something. I want everybody to get in on something with this. Don't let this moment pass you by and you just walk out. Every person, you ain't got 21. Don't you let the devil rob you of this. Everybody gets something. Everybody gets something. Everybody gets something and get it on this world. Come on. You can't shout like this.
this and I give God nothing. Come on. Amen. Come on, shout for the breakthrough. Come on. Come on, real big, real big. Come on. 